hi everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Elizabeth it's good to have you today I'm going to be showing you how I digitize uh, an applique design using Embird now Embird is my chosen uh, digitizing software of choice when I was in the market of looking for a digitizing software the first thing I did is had a look on YouTube to see if I could find videos of people using digitizing software. There weren't many that used Embird. Embird is not one that many people use. Well, I couldn't find many videos of people using Embird. So already that was kind of a thing that would have put me off. But when I was looking at my budget, Embird seems to be the one that um, I could afford. So I chose to use Embird. Now there are different parts to Embird. In order to use um, Embird as a digitizing software, you need to purchase the studio version, which enables you to, um, to uh, digitize. Um, also, I also purchased the font uh, engine, a font generator, which means I am able to use the fonts that are already available on my computer to create designs. So I really love doing appliques. Um, I think it's a nice way of adding a nice element and a texture to your design. It's just, I just find it quite, uh, the layers are quite interesting to me and I've enjoyed doing different kinds of applique. So that is what I'm going to be showing you today. I found that the uh, basic functions of creating an applique seems to be the same across uh, all digitizing software. So the videos that I've seen on Embrilliance and Hatch, they all kind of follow the same steps. Now, how you create those steps may be different, so I'm going to be showing you how I create those steps today in Embird. I am not yet a master at Embird, but with everything, the more you use it, the more you practice, the better you get. So I'm getting better at using Embird and I'm going to show you how to do that today, how to create a nice, uh, simple, uh, simple design in just four easy steps. So if you'd like to see how I do that, Stay tuned. So I am in Embird in the studio version, which is where I digitize my designs. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change my hoop size. I'm using the Janome 550 embroidery machine and I've decided to um, create my design on the 140 by 200 hoop size. And I'm also selecting the uh, font engine text here. And the font engine text, which is an, um, an addition to the software, just means that you can use the fonts already on your computer system to create designs. So on the right here, you can see all the fonts that are on my computer system here. And I'm just going to select a font that is wide enough or thick enough for my design. So I'm using the Vadana Pro Black here because it is nice and wide. So I'm just typing out my slogan here using my keyboard. And then checking the tick mark. And we can see here that it's come out quite small so I need to resize it so what you can do is you can either um, click on one of those little black squares that are around your um, stitch out your your word and drag it out or you can go into the transform window and change the dimensions so by clicking on the horizontal or vertical um, arrows you see there you can go directly in and put in a figure and that will change the size or you can just click on the uh, the red uh, 
numbers that you see there and either click your left mouse or right mouse to increase or decrease but I like to um, put in a figure so I click on those horizontal or vertical arrows and then put in an exact figure that I want so here you can see I'm putting 59 and that's uh, 59 millimeters and then I'm clicking apply and that has changed my um, height of my words here so I'm just dragging that down into place now this is a fill stitch so what I've typed out here will be a fill stitch and that is not what I want I want to convert it into an outline so you go into convert create outline from fill and there on the right you can see that it's created the outline which is highlighted there in blue I'm going to now drag a color over it just so I can tell the difference of the fill and the outline so we can see the green here is the outline and the blue is the fill stitch which I do not need so I'm going to right click and then delete that so I'm just going to highlight the whole uh, thing again and uh, generate the stitches what I want to do now is I want to have um, copy that so you can either do a uh, control or command C or you can go into edit and copy and then uh, paste so now I have here you can see on the right I have a copy of that first lot of wording so I've changed the color so what you do is you right click and drag a color down and that will just change it for you and I'm also pasting it again so I have three lots of my word in here and I'm changing the color for each of those three groups so my first uh, lot of word in here which is in the green this is going to be my placement stitch so here you can see the three different colors so the first uh, lot of stitches which is going to be my placement stitch which is this green lot of word in here I do not need the centers of the A's so I'm going to select those and I'm going to right click and then delete those because I do not need them for when I'm doing my placement. The placement is just so I know where to place my uh, fabric. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my first lot of stitches, which is in the green, and go into my parameters. And you can see here that Embird does an um, applique. It does an automatic applique. I never use that. I set up my applique myself so this first lot of stitches is just going to be a simple single stitch so I always have three uh, three lots of stitches when I do my applique so this next one is going to be my tack down stitch and again that can be a single stitch and then we're going to apply that and generate the stitches And my third lot of stitches, which is the one in the blue here, this is going to be my satin stitch. So I'm going to go into the parameters and set that up. So we can see here at the top where it says width, it's currently on two millimeters, but I want my satin stitch a little bit wider. So you could either right click to increase your um, measurements or left click to decrease it, but I always click the word width which means I can um, put in a figure directly so here I'm going to put in 3.5 and click the check mark and that will change my width of my satin stitch for me and my I've selected um, auto select underlay which I'm happy with and I'm just going to apply that and generate the stitches so we have our three different uh, wordings here, or three different colors here, and this is just so that my machine 
stops at each one of those colors so I can do each step. So my placement stitch where I lay down my fabric, tack down, and then the final satin stitch. So here I've gone into the sew simulator here just to see how this is going to stitch out. It's always a good idea to have a look at your sew simulator before you actually send this off to your machine. So here you can see my uh, placement stitch which is the green one without the middles of the A's and now it's doing the tack down stitch which has the middles of the A because you need to be able to cut um, around the fabric and in those uh, center pieces as well. And then the next thing is the satin stitch. So this is going to be the final finishing stitch here, which is in the blue. And you can see it's cutting at the end of each word, which I'm okay with. I don't want it to have a uh, running stitch, which will show up in my design. Also, what I've noticed by doing that sew simulator is that the H and the A are too close and the L and the A are too close. So I'm just going to select those by drawing a marquee around those letters and I'm going to hold down my shift and my arrow key on my computer and just move that slightly to the right just so that there's some space in between those letters. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's going to stitch on top of each other and not look very nice. So I'm just moving the A over slightly at the end as well. So we have a nice uh, gap between all of the lettering. And when you draw that marquee, it selects everything that's underneath. So all the layers that are underneath, it will also select it. So um, it's better to do that uh, just draw a marquee around the letters so that everything moves in unison. So I'm just selecting everything again here and I'm going to go into my uh, transform window just to um, center this horizontally so it's in the middle of my uh, in the middle of my hoop. I'm just going to start grouping each of those layers just so that my uh, my panel here at the top isn't full of um, too many letters. So what you do is you highlight it and you right click and then you can group each one of those uh, colored bits of wording so each layer you can put into a group so that your uh, window at the top on the right isn't full and you can still at the bottom where it says parts you can still see each kind of um, each element of those layers there and those are editable so if you click on any of those you can still edit them it just means your panel at the top is just a lot more uncluttered so now I'm going to do my final bit of um, my slogan which is just going to be embroidery so again I've clicked on my um, font font engine where I can pick a uh, uh, um, font that is on my system so I've picked this one here which is quite a nice one in contrast with the one that um, I'll be doing my applique in and I can see straight away that the N and the O are touching it's overlapping so I need to move that out because it's um, going to cause some problems if you have too much overlapping and uh, you could break a needle when this happens. So I've just selected that O, I've drawn a marquee around it and I've used my shift and arrow key just to move that O out of it. And you can see a tiny little line at the top where the N and the O are connecting. That's okay, that just means it will just stitch out in one go and um, which is nice for your machine as well. I'm resizing this so again you can click on the 
black arrows at the corner and drag those out or you can click on transform and your transform window and change the dimensions and you can see I've unclicked the um, aspect ratio so that I can um, resize this so again you can click on the horizontal or vertical arrows to um, change this and put in a figure or you can um, right click on the red numbers to uh, increase and decrease so I've clicked apply and I am happy with that size so I've changed the color of the um, the word no and again what you do is you just drag a color over the selected um, object so I'm selecting everything and I'm generating the stitches and I've gone into 3D to show what it would look like which is um, a nice uh, view to have it in because it's closer to what you will see in real life when it's stitched out and I've just gone into my density map here and I can see there's not a lot of red which is good if you've got a lot of red in your design when you go into your density map it is not um, a good thing you could break a needle so again I'm going into my um, sew simulator just to show me how this is going to stitch out what order it's going to stitch out so I have my placement stitch followed by my tack down stitch and finally my satin stitch and I can see all my wordings have a nice gap between them and I'm happy with that So that is it. That is a very simple way of um, doing an applique yourself just in those three, uh, three layers, placement, tack down, satin stitch. It's really, really straightforward. Um, and I love doing an applique because it just adds an extra dimension to your design. So the next thing I do is I want to show you how I um, save this and convert it to the file that my um, machine will recognize. So I'm always going to save this as a um, editable version. So I'm just going to go straight into uh, design save as just in case I want to ever edit this in any way or add anything else it's always good to save it as an editable um, version so I'm just saving it in in the studio version and then I'm gonna go up here to that um, icon that looks like an M with a little green blob on it this is where you can uh, get your file set up for the version of your machine So I always uh, skip this part. It's always going to come up with this part. Just skip it. And you can see now, because I'm using the Janome, that that is selected on the left. And also I am going to uh, select center and hoop. Just makes my life easier. So depending on what machine you use, you're going to select your version here so that your machine will recognize the file when you put your USB in. So I normally save this on a USB that I use in my computer and then what I do is I have my other USB that's in my machine and I just copy and paste that file over to the USB for my machine. So. If you found this video useful or interesting, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet done so and click that bell so you are notified when I upload a new video. 
typically I upload on a Sunday. So my next video is actually going to be me doing the stitch out of the digitizing that you have just seen. And as always guys, don't have a good day, have an amazing day. Till next time, bye.